Okay, so next is a task number two with MPLS 6 VPE. So just like any other IPv4 MPLS VPN, we need to configure a BGP session between R1 and R2 to advertise VPN V6 routes. We need to source our BGP session from the router loopback zero. Okay, so obviously this is going to be a IBGP session. To be specific, then we need to verify connectivity between R6 and R7 for customer C1 and then between R8 and switch 1 for customer C2. And no traffic should be permitted between sites that belong to different customers, obviously. Okay, so that would be our goal for this task. So let's go ahead and start a configuration on the router R1. So get it under the router BGP 100, no auto, no sync. Okay, first thing is router ID, 162.16.0.1, as always, for our best practice. And since we're not dealing with IPv4 BGP here, we can disable IPv4 unicast with the command BGP default IPv4 unicast. Okay, then we can specify our neighbor. Since we're only doing two neighbors in this particular lab, we can just go ahead and do a per neighbor configuration instead of using the peer template, for example. So our neighbor for R1 is going to be R2, which is 162.16.0.2. And then remote AS would be 100. And we need to specify the source interface with the update source command, loopback 0. Okay, then we can get under the address family, the question mark right here. Instead of VPN v4, it will be a VPN v6. So when you deal with IPv6, the route that gets transported across the MPBGP is called VPN v6. Okay, and the type of route will be unicast and specify the neighbor. First thing we have to activate the neighbor for that particular address family that we have previously defined. And then again, similar to the regular MPLS VPN, we need to send community to carry the route target as part of the VPN v6 routes. Okay, so those are all the configuration that we need for the IBGP session. Next, we need to redistribute uh, static routes that we have configured pointing towards the site router loopback interfaces into the BGP. So we can do the address family, IPv6, specify the VRF, first we'll do C1, and then we're just gonna first use network command to advertise the locally connected subnet. So it will be 2001.00 for the router R6 is 16, zero slash 64, and then we're just gonna keep it simple with redistribute static. And again, if you were to do with production, configuration then definitely attach a route map to that so you have a control of what route this actually gets redistributed. Okay next we just do up arrow address family this time is IPv6 VRFC2 with a network 2001.0.0.18 slash 64 and then read this static. Okay before moving on let's do a quick check with the show IP VGP. So the, there's no command, you might think that we might want to use show IPv6 EGP, but it's actually as part of the show IPBGP. And then after that, you have to specify if you want to look at v4 or v6 type of output. So here we want to do, actually, since we're dealing with VPN, our MPLS VPN is going to be a BGP VPN v6, unicast all. So you can see that we already have some routes being installed into the BGP table. These are the locally connected routes. These are our static route that we redistribute that. Okay. Next is to repeat the same sets of configuration on R2, but I can just pretty much copy what we have already configured on R1 and then paste it into R2 with a few modifications. So let me bring up Notepad. Right here, router ID is obviously going to be 0 0.2. Make sure we have a no auto, no sync on top. The neighbor for R2 is going to be R1. So all this should be 0 0.1. And then for C2, I believe that should be a 102. And then for C1, that should be a 27. 
Okay, since that's connected to router seven. So copy that, jump over to R2, paste. You can see no errors. Give it a few seconds and we can do show IP, BGP, VPN, V6, unicast, all. And you can see that same thing, we get our routes installed in the BGP table and we also have the BGP adjacency came up as well. And we so far have received four routes from R1 on R2. So if you do show command one more time, and I believe you can still use all the pretty much the command option, very similar to IPv4. So you can do a regex, for example, although we can't really use that since this is IVGP routes and it doesn't have the AS path as part of the routes. But if you look right here, anything that's coming from the router R1, you can see the next top having the format of FFFF and then followed by the dotted decimal format of IPv4 uh, loopback addresses of R1. Okay, so here we have our subnet between R1 and R6. That's R6 loopbacks, R1 and R8 subnets, and that's R8 loopback. So we should be seeing something similar on R1. So let's go back to R1, do an up arrow on the show command, and you can see that R1 is also receiving full routes from R2. Okay, you can do summary, here are four routes, and then let's take a detailed look of, for example, R7 loopback addresses. So that particular slash is 64 routes. You can see that it's being prepended since it's a VPN v6 kind of routes. It's being prepended with the route distinguisher 100 100 since it's part of a VRFC one. And then take a quick note of the MPLS label as well for that particular subnet. Okay, and then if you do show MPLS, let's see, forwarding a VRFC one of the same subnet, you see the outgoing label is 25, which is exactly what we saw as part of the VPN v4 routes, and it's being tagged as a VPN routes. Okay, and if you do show IPv6, uh, Ceph VRFC one of that route, you see that there are two labels associated with that particular forwarding. So 25 is the VPN label, and then the 18 is the transport label, okay, which is uh, the topmost label. And that's just to help getting the packet from R1 to R2. So if you do show MPLS forwarding label 18, you can see right here, that particular label is for the R2 loopback zero interface. And the next top for that is the router R3 right there. All right, now let's do a quick trace route. I want to do a trace route as part of the VRF. So let's do trace route VRF C1 and enter so we can do the advanced trace route with the protocol IPv6. Target will be 2001, let's say uh, 7, which is R7 loopback 10, sourcing from the locally connected subnet, which is 2100.16, double colon 1, and just enter through that. And let's see what we've got. You can see the first hop has the label 18 and 25. And then once it gets to the router R2, the top label got popped, and then it's ended up with only the VPN label 25. So that would be, uh, since we don't have the entry on the second hop, not sure if it took R4 or R5. But either way, once it's arrived at R2, there's only one VPN label 25. So it looks just like any regular IPv4 MPLS VPN and then finally reach R7. Okay, so now let's do a connectivity test from R6. Let's ping 2001.7, so R7 loopback 10 again, sourcing from its own loopback 10. You can see that is pingable. Then let's try to ping router R8, which is located on a different VRF. You can see it came back with unreachable or ICMP unreachable since the that particular subnet does not exist in the VRF routing table for C1. And the same thing if you attempt to ping switch one, 
we should be getting IPCMP unreachable for those. Okay, so obviously R6 can only reach R7. That's within the same customer VRF C1, but not C2. Okay, let's do similar kind of tests from the router R8, which is part of VRF C2, ping 2001, 10, one sourcing from loopback 10. You can see R8 can ping switch one just fine, but I'm trying to ping with this R6 or R7, we're getting the ICMP unreachable for both of those. Okay, so we have verified the connectivity within the customer sites, but at the same time, we have also shown that the traffic would not cross between the VRF. Okay, so and that should complete our task number two. As you can see that this is very similar to the 6PE that we saw in the previous video, in that the only routers that needs to run dual stacks are the PE routers, but instead of exchanging a normal IPv6 route, so you're exchanging a VPN v6 route for the 6VP. And the number of MPLS labels that gets prepended into the packets that stays the same with two labels, with the top label trying to get the packet across from the ingress to the egress router, while the bottom label put the packets to the proper VRF to the final destination. And the only notable difference as far as the configuration when you compare this with the IPv4 and PLS VPN is the way you define the VRF with the command VRF definition. But once you get everything else configured, pretty much everything you learn on the regular MPLS VPN with IPv4 also applies to the 6VP and this includes whether the way you can control the route target exchange or also things like using the route reflector to deal with the scalability of the BGP topology. Okay, just one last note is that if you wish to run routing protocol on the PE routers for the PECE dynamic routing, make sure that your iOS versions contain supports for the IPv6 VRF for that particular routing protocol, as you might need to run fairly recent code for that particular routing protocol to be supported in the VRF. All right, so that's pretty much wraps up our video on MPLS 6 VPE. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.